Scientists have installed an innovative new radar system along the coast of Wakayama Prefecture in western Japan. It's designed to observe tsunami at an early stage. A research group led by Japan's land ministry and Kansai University developed the radar based on aircraft control tower technology. The system is installed 60 kilometers off the coast of Mihama town. It can study the height and speed of a tsunami before the waves hit the coast. Tsunami up to 18 meters tall are forecast to hit the town in the event of a large earthquake in the Nankai Trough off Japan's Pacific coast. Kansai University professor Tomoyuki Takahashi says any observations made using the radar will eventually yield more accurate tsunami predictions. One of the goals of this project is to convey the true scale of a tsunami through gathering more reliable initial data. Experts say overly optimistic expectations of smaller tsunami before the March 11th earthquake last year left many areas unprepared for the larger waves that actually did hit. Meanwhile, several Japanese companies are taking steps to avoid damage from that predicted Nankai Trough quake. One of those is a major precision equipment maker that plans to relocate its plant from the Pacific coast to the other side of the country. Tokyo's Nikiso Company makes medical equipment and aircraft parts at its factory in the central prefecture of Shizuoka, right on the threatened coastline. The Japanese government estimated in August that more than 300,000 people could be killed if a massive Nankai quake and tsunami were to hit the area. That's the reason Nikiso has decided to move its plant over 200 kilometers to Kanazawa in Ishikawa Prefecture, facing the Sea of Japan. The company's CEO, Toshihiko Kai, on Thursday, briefed both the Ishikawa governor and the Kanazawa mayor on his relocation plan. Kanazawa seldom has earthquakes, and the city is blessed with a good social infrastructure and human resources. Kai added that it would be difficult for the factory to keep producing vital medical equipment in the event of a major disaster along the Pacific coast if it remained in Shizuoka. And now, guess what? You know, what? the Nuclear Regulatory Commission last Thursday, yeah. guess what they met on? You won't believe this. Even you won't believe it. <laughs> the subject of the meeting was 80-year licenses for old nuclear power plants. Eighty year licenses? My God, that's from from the first build up to the when they have to close. Eighty years, my God. Well will you extrapolate on that, Dave Freeman, and tell us what that means? Well I, I if you're not oh, if you wouldn't want to drive an eighty year old car, uh, <laughs> can you just imagine the dangers of taking a nuclear reactor built in 1980 with the design of a Fukushima plant right. uh, that would operate uh, for 80 years, that's to 2060, and next to an earthquake fault. Now, you don't have to be a scientist to figure out that maybe the chances of an earthquake happening in any one year is pretty small. Maybe even five years, it ain't going to happen. But if you have a plant actively operating for 80 years, uh, you're not just rolling the dice. You're practically committing suicide. Yeah. Well, and and well, not, to man, not, to, not to mention the fact uh, that, uh, you know, if you're 80 years old yourself, you have very good idea of what problems of old age. Now, these plants were designed for half that long. Yeah. Uh, we have no idea what the uh, how the bombardment of these radioactive uh, radioactivity inside the reactor vessel is going to is going to do to the uh, reactor itself over years. We have, I mean, practical things like the installation on the wires is going to wear out. I mean. Uh, we have no, 
It, it, it just makes everyone living within a 50-mile radius a guinea pig, while the NRC experiments of how long, how long a radioactive factory can exist without uh, Meltdown. annihilating the population. What? You know, it, it's a form of insanity, uh, but that's the Nuclear Regulatory Commission. Okay, well, you say there's no solution to the waste, but there is a solution to the waste, and the solution to the waste is to just leave it exactly where it is and to have somebody look at it for, for a million years, you know. So, so they just have to have all these zombies who are there at the moment, sitting there doing nothing, who are going to just have to sit there, and their children are going to sit there, and their children's children and so on, looking at the waste and making sure that it doesn't leak out of the tanks. And if it starts to look like it's going to leak out of the tanks, they build another tank around that tank, and then they build another tank around the tank that they built around that tank, and so on you know, to infinity. And that is a solution to the waste, because then the waste will just stay where it is now, and it won't get any worse. And if they make more waste, they'll have to put it inside that tank and leave it there. And as far as contaminated land is concerned, and places like Sellafield and all that, they'll just have to put a fence around it and say, this is contaminated land, do not enter. And so that's the best we can do. I mean, it doesn't help to put it down the hole in the ground. I mean, you may as well put it somewhere where you can keep an eye on it and make sure it doesn't escape. So that's the solution. And why not put a hole in the ground? Ah, well, because then if something goes wrong, you can't do anything about it. That's the point. And what could be could go wrong there? Well, God, well, loads of things could go wrong. I mean, the main thing that would go wrong is that it go, it's, it's a hole in, in the ground is not a secured depository, you know? I mean, you put it into a hole in the ground, and then there's a crack in the hole in the ground, or maybe there's a, an earthquake, or, or maybe there's a fault that you didn't know about, or maybe there's some water movement that, that changes over a period of time, and we're talking geological time scale, so, you know, just about everywhere where they've suggested putting it in a hole in the ground has had a geological um, fault occurring, you know, uh, in, in the last thousand years, never mind about, you know, the next million years or whatever it is it has for the half-life of these uraniums and plutoniums. So you can't, you can't actually guarantee that if you put it in a hole in the ground, something won't go wrong. And you can't pull it out of the hole in the ground, that's the point. I mean, the, the, the Forschmark idea is not one in which they put it down in the hole in the ground and then they can take it out if something goes wrong. They can't. They just pop it down and pop the next one down and pop the next one down and so on and send it all down there and then they seal it all up. But if something goes wrong, then they can't do anything. Whereas if it's where it is at the moment, at Sellafield or wherever it is, above ground or in some kind of big hangar or big kind of area where they kind of look at it, then they can look at it. And if something goes wrong and they've got all their detectors and their Geiger counters and whatnot, then they can just repackage it and put something around it. But they have to sit there. Yeah, they have to sit there forever. Absolutely, yeah, sure. Well, it serves them right, isn't it? Shouldn't have made it in the first place. And I've no doubt they'll pay them a lot of money for sitting there. <laughs> so yeah, they can sit there. And, and, I mean, maybe they should have special uniforms, like you know, guard of the nuclear waste, and they could have like special kind of green uniforms with special badges, like Superman or something. You know, that make them feel good. <laughs> I've always thought it quite good to have special uniforms. In all the science fiction stories, they did special uniforms, you know. So you could say, what's your daddy do? Oh, he's a guard of the nuclear waste. Oh, no. <laughs> what a useful job, George. Yes, it is, isn't it?